Another method of getting input is to use an input box, which pops up on the screen, allows the user to enter some input, and then disappears. In this example, we will use one input box to ask the user to enter the price of an item, and another to request the number of items. Our procedure will then calculate and display the total price for the items. Now let's click on the button to execute the code. The first input box appears on the screen and we can see that it has a title, item price, and it prompts us to enter the item price. We enter the price in the text box and click OK. Now the next input box appears asking us to enter the number of items which we'll enter in the text box and we click OK. The calculation is then performed and the output displayed in our list box. Now let's look briefly at the design of our form and then move to the code window where we write the code to execute our input boxes. On our form we have a button BTN Calculate and a list box LST Display and we are going to write our code in the procedure for the click event of the button BTN Calculate. So now let's switch over to the code window and write the code for the procedure. So the first thing we need to do is decide on the names of our variables and what type of values we wish to store in them. I'm going to store the price of the item in a variable called price which we will declare as a double because it may contain decimal values. So we write dim price as double. The number of items will be a whole number so we can store those in a variable called num which we'll declare as an integer. num as integer. Our total price may contain decimal values, so we'll declare it as double, and we call our variable total. So dim total as double. Now let's include a line of code to clear the contents of the list box, as we did in the last lesson. This will mean that each time the button is clicked, all previous output will be, will be cleared from the list box. So we'll write LST display dot items dot clear. Now let's write the code to display our first input box and store the value entered by the user in the variable price. So we begin with price equals input box bracket and notice when we press the bracket we get some help from Visual Basic indicating to us what we need to type and we can see in bold that the first thing we are asked for is the prompt which is to be a string so we we'll enter the string for our prompt which will read enter the item price. And we close that string and when we press the comma we'll see now that the next thing we're asked for is the title. The title though we notice is in square brackets which means that it's actually optional but in this case we'll put our title in and we'll put a string in that says item price and we'll close our brackets. Visual Basic already contains the input box method, so all we need to do is to supply the prompt and the title that we wish to appear in our input box. So the code which appears on the right of the assignment operator will make the input box appear on the screen and will send back whatever value the user enters in the input box. That value will then be stored in our variable price, which is on the left hand side of our assignment operator. Now let's use an input box to request the number of items and store that the number entered by the user in our variable num. 
so we begin with our variable name num equals and again we use the input box method we open the brackets and again we enter our prompt which in this case will be enter the number of items followed by our title which we'll just call, say number of items and the title needs to be a string so I need to close the inverted commas and now let's run our program so we can see the two input boxes appear so when we click on the button the first input box should appear and we can see that it has the title item price and the prompt enter the item price and we can enter our number so let's say 3.75 and hit OK once we hit OK the next input box should appear and we can enter the number of items and if we say 9 and once we hit OK the value 9 will be returned and stored in our variable num returning to our procedure we now do the calculation and the total can be found by multiplying the price of each item by the number of items. So in this case we're multiplying the contents of the variable price by the contents of the variable num and storing our answer in total. And finally let's display our output in the list box. So we write LST display dot items dot add and in our brackets as we did in earlier lessons we enter the string that we wish to output the total price for and let's now put in the number of items which we'll find in our variable num and again we use ampersands to keep the pieces together followed by another string items is ampersand and now we want to use the contents of our variable total and that should display our output now let's run it and check to see if our program has worked so again we click on the button to execute the code the first input box appears and we'll enter the price of our items the next input box appears and we'll enter the number of items and we click on OK Then finally our output appears in the list box and we can see the way the output is displayed we get the string the total price for and then the value that's a num which is 9 followed by the string items is followed by the value which is in total so returning to our line of code which created the input box for the item price remember we don't have to create the input box ourselves we simply have to supply certain information such as the prompt and the title which will control how we would like it to appear when the input box appears the user then enters a value in the text box part and clicks OK. This value is then stored in our variable price. So we can think of the code on the right hand side of our equal sign as simply representing the value that the user entered in the input box and then this value is stored in the variable on the left hand side of the equals or the assignment operator. So at this stage we have seen two methods of input inputting from text boxes and inputting using input boxes and we've also looked at two methods of output outputting two text boxes and outputting two list boxes in our next lesson we will look at some structures in Visual Basic which will allow certain blocks of code to execute only under particular conditions